Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have six fun, upcycle, repurposed, and inspiring thrift flips and trash to treasures. And a quick only Christmas light review with my sidekick, Katie. So we're going to start this video off with this metal circle that I have. I think this is like a surround for either a light fixture or maybe even a stove pipe or something to that nature. I don't know. I found it in the free area at my local dump and I thought it would make a really cool sign. I grabbed a scrap piece of cardboard and put it underneath and traced around the outside so that I could have a nice backing for it. So I have the circle uh, all traced out. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller and cut on the inside of that circle so that it will fit inside of my metal frame that I have. There's a nice flat area in there that it will fit just like this and I'll be able to glue that in when I'm done with the front. So I have this uh, calendar that I got from Dollar Tree that when it came out this year and it had some really nice uh, pictures in it and I really love this Christmas or December picture and it says joy. I also like this count your blessings um, but we'll save that one till probably next year and I'll use that a little sooner when I know I have it because I didn't even know I had, I had it in there or I would have done it sooner. Anyway so now we're going to cut out around the joy picture and same exact thing just going to trace it out and then cut it to fit on the uh, cardboard. So I'm going to uh, take some Mod Podge and we're gonna stick it down. I wasn't going to stick it, uh, but I wanted it to not get uh, loose inside that frame because it doesn't fit up tight. So I'm just gonna Mod Podge the back of it and decoupage it onto this cardboard. So I just did section at a time. I started in the middle and then I did each end, adding a light coat of Mod Podge. I did have some wrinkling a little bit, but once it dried, it did suck a lot of those wrinkles out and it wasn't too bad. Now with this one, I opted not to do a coating over the top of it or a seal coat because these pages are glossy and already a nice uh, sealed front. I wasn't gonna worry too much about it being uh, sealed in and I knew it was going to stick down really well. So I took my heat gun and I put the bead of glue around that flat part on the inside of my little now frame and I added my little joy sign into it. So it has a nice cardboard backing and the really cute pretty front. So now I'm just playing around with greenery to see what I wanted to put in. I had that the little a green bow there and I didn't really like it and I had these little cedar pieces and I really like how these look so I made a mini swag to go on the top of my joy I added a few little white pit berries I think I got these at Hobby Lobby one time or another last year maybe and never used them so I have them here and I think they sell them at Dollar Tree as well so now I'm just going to glue that on. I added some different greenery and glued it to my sign. And now I've made a little uh, jute bow and where I just wrapped it around my fingers and tied it in the middle. Very simple. And then adding some red pit berries along with that to make it pop a little bit and add that red element to bring it out of my picture. So I just take my berries and wrap them around something that will give them the little loops and my scissors seem to work fine for that. I added a couple holes at the top so that I could thread some of my wire in through those holes and make a little hanger for my sign. And this guy is done. Let me know what you think.
I found this cute little shelf at Goodwill for $4. It is all natural. It has not been painted or stained or anything. So I thought I could put my own touch on it. So I'm going to give it a paint job of green once I get all these stickers off and wipe it down. I have this Sherman Williams Color to Go paint jug. I got two of these at, again, my free area at my dump. And ta-da, that's the color. I love how I open that, like ta-da. <laughs> um, so it's a beautiful green color, and I really like it a lot. So I did grab two of those, so I'll be doing a lot of different things with this paint. I mean, you can't beat free paint. And uh, it's good quality where it's Sherman Williams, I'm quite sure. And the coverage was really good on this. I did two coats and uh, it covered very well. Once my paint was dry, I distressed the edges all around my little shelf. I went down to the bare wood right through the green, and then I am going to add a little bit of my antique wax, my brown antique wax, to uh, darken up those uh, distressed areas and just give it a more aged look. As I was putting this on the edges, I realized after I started wiping it back that I really liked the look of the brown uh, antique wax on my green part on the painted area also it gave it a nice deep a darker look uh, almost a more primitive look and of course that's my thing so it changed it just enough so it looked more aged and so I decided that I was going to do the whole thing so I just started putting antique wax all over my paint areas as well and then wiped it all back and it came out so good as you can see here acquired this raw wood shelf at the free area at my dump again. This was looks like it was signed by Alex, so Alex did a pretty good job on this. Uh, at first glance, I thought it was perfect. I'm going to use my Sherman Williams paint to go, and we're going to use the green again on this piece because I liked it on the old the other piece that I did. So as I'm painting away, I noticed that this one little shelf that I was working on was a little bit crooked, but I thought I would wait and work on it after I had everything all done and try and get it to straighten it out a little bit. It's not going to look good if you stand it up and try to put something on it. It's going to look off kilter. And I didn't notice it at first, but once I started painting and looking at it in a different way, I said, hmm, that's not quite right. So I'm going to show you here, but I don't even, I can't really tell in this picture, but it does go off at an angle just a little bit, and it is fairly easy to fix with this hammer. I was like, well, I'm going to give it a try. If it breaks and cracks, then oh well, I guess I won't have this as, you know, in the video, or I'll just show you that I ruined a piece. Uh, but it seemed to let go just enough so that I could uh, move it over and make it straight and all I had to do was repaint a little bit. I did add a small nail into the front of it to go into the back so it would hold it. I think this this is held on by just glue because I didn't see any nail holes in this whatsoever. Uh, so I fixed that, repainted it, let it dry, and now I'm gonna take my sandpaper and sand down the edges to distress them, of course like I normally do. And now I'm taking some black paint and I'm gonna go over those raw edges and just give them some distress with the black paint. I put it on and then I go back and wipe it down just a little bit and uh, to give it a, a, a smoother look. 
Now I've decided that I'm gonna use this, instead of standing up vertical, we're gonna go horizontal with this shelf and make like a cubby. And I decided I would get six of these little round pieces to use as feet on there so we could get it up off the table just a little bit. I thought this would be a really cute piece to have in a kitchen. You could put your spices on it. You could uh, just add your decor on it. I just thought it was something different. So I'm adding the antique wax as the stain on my feet. Once the beads were dry, I added them to my shelf or my cubby with E6000 and some hot glue. So let's get started. We're gonna try out these lights. I got these from Alni. I've worked with them before on a few different other kinds of lights that I use in some of my decor, those little fairy lights and things like that. Um, and I think some Christmas tree lights one year. So yeah. this may be my third year working with them. So uh, they sent me a box of lights or us a box of lights. So only low voltage string lights, 600 LED uh, lights. Um, she charge eight modes for a short press. Long press is three modes. We'll get into like the technical stuff with shoot, these shoot. Um, once we get them up. Shoot, shoot, now, yeah. Oh my gosh, those are beautiful. Oh, I know. Aren't Let those pretty? They're like plastic coated with these little bubbles. Yeah on there. Okay, we got these instructions. So it just says connect the power before you start to make sure that uh, everything is working and it's all working just fine. There, This string here is 196.8 feet long. So we still have quite a bit left on the strand on the roll. Uh, we didn't do the whole thing, but so let's see the control. The remote control can do 16.4 feet away, which this is the remote control right here. There, there, it's a little bit darker. Katie's got to go home, so we wanted to show you the lights before she went home. And then I'll come back, when I come back, it'll be really dark out, and then I'll show them. I'm still here. <laughs> yes, you're still here right now. But when I come back from dropping her off, it'll be dark, and I can show you what they look like. When I saw this box at the free area at my dump, it reminded me of something that Sandy's Country Crafts did. Uh, Sandy did a box with some trees in it and some lights, and I thought I could do the same with this box. So thank you, Sandy, for the idea and the inspiration. So I'm going to try it with this box here. So I brought it home, and I am going to use some of my green foam and I'm going to add that to my box and I can just cut it down so that it fits nicely and then I'll take the little pieces that are left over and tuck them down in to make this a little bit tighter. I also 
added a little bit of hot glue as well to the sides and the bottom. I just wanted to make sure it was going to fit before I did uh, any of the packing in there to make sure it stayed. I have these bottle brush trees that I got from Amazon that I will link down in the description. Uh, they come with these sparkly ones and they also come with the green um, snow tipped ones and they're all different sizes. Now I knew I had some taller green ones. I just didn't know where they were. They weren't mixed in with these so I had to go on a search. So any of the ones that you see me put in this box except for this green one in my hand is not going to make it to the box. Right now I'm just trying them out to see what I like, but I decided I wanted to do a more rustic natural look with just all green trees. So first I'm going to take my Spanish moss, glue that into the top of my foam. And here I'm just showing you, I'm not gonna use these trees at all. I'm just gonna go with the green colored trees. I did stick with the same layout that I was going to use with the sparkly trees as well, but uh, I realized that that middle tree, I wanted it to be taller, and I couldn't find my taller trees, but I did go on search and found them. So I'm going to be changing that out so when you see the final pictures, you'll see that it has a little bit of a taller tree because I did go and take this one out and find the bigger ones. So now I have some fairy lights that I'm going to use and just kind of uh, go in and out of the trees and kind of uh, wrap them around and give this a nice festive look. This is going to be really pretty sitting on a counter or in a window and have these little lights on at night. It's going to look so cute. So just wrap those in and around. It's a pretty long strand of lights and I'll have a link in the description for those as well. I also have this little wooden sign that says Believe. I picked this up a long time ago and it could have been a yard sale find or thrifting find. I don't know, I've had it in my stash a long time. So, but I will look on Amazon if I can find uh, the signs there. I'll link that down below, but I'm not sure really where they came from. Uh, so I added, I glued the little Believe sign to the front with a little green bow. I made a cute little pocket for the back of my little box to hold my little on and off switch for my lights. And this is done. Another item from the free area at my dump, a really pretty picture frame, or it's going to be eventually. Right now it's a blue color with a heavy, heavy distress, and the middle part has a burlap frame around it, and I really like the looks of that, and I thought it would look great in black. So I'm going to do both of those uh, in the black ink color in Waverly, and I taped off the burlap so that I wouldn't get any of uh, the black paint on it. I just use a little bit of painter's tape and I went around that piece. I think I just did, I might have done two coats, I can't remember now, but uh, just enough so it would cover it. I'm going to go back and distress it a little bit and add some antique wax anyway. So um, I'm pretty sure this part of it, I did do two coats because I wanted it a nice coverage on it. Uh, it was so chippy and uh, 
heavily distressed, which I don't mind, but it was in the blue and it does not match any of my decor that I have. So uh, the black fits it very well. So I sanded down all the edges and distressed them the best that I could. And then because of the raw edges that came through when I distressed, I decided I wanted to use a little antique wax and I just sealed the whole thing with the antique wax and that took those raw edges and gave them a nice light brown color, which blended very well with the black paint. So now I wanted to add something in the middle of the picture frame. It can be removed at any time, uh, but I wanted to add something Christmassy. So I have this Tim Holtz uh, ideology. This is the Christmas paper or decoupage paper. And I'm going to cut a piece of this so that I can set it inside of the picture frame and so it can be removed. I'm not going to decoupage it or anything like that. But I really love this paper. It reminds me of the one with the birds on it that I had last spring and it's really pretty colors in it and um, simple but beautiful. So I'm going to use a little piece of this for my little frame there and then we're going to add it to my booth to uh, so somebody can purchase it if they'd like and they can remove this little picture if they also want to do that. They can change it out with the seasons. I'll have a link down in the description for this a Tim Holtz paper. And uh, I've had this for a while and I just haven't had anything that I wanted to use it on. And I dug it out and I said, I'm going to use it in this frame. So I figured out how I wanted it to sit. I wanted the poinsettia to be uh, in the middle with the Yule and I think it came out really pretty. but not least let's rebuild this snowman we're not going to build one we're going to rebuild the snowman he is so cute and i love his cute little face i believe he's made out of a resin type and the buttons on his front had a uh, kind of i don't know what happened but it got red and pink or maybe it was from these pom-poms uh it, he must have gotten wet and there was drips of red and pink all over the front of him and he needed a paint job so I thought, well, I'll take these pom-poms off. We'll see if we can do that. And I was able to heat heat up the, the glue just a little bit, and they came off really easily from all the way around. So I took some white paint. This is um, Picket Fence, maybe, from Folk Art. I think that's the name of it. And it's just a really white paint, and I'm just going around my little snowman and covering him up uh, until all that red is gone. Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and some of my Epsom salts and give it a nice coat of Mod Podge and then I'm sprinkling Epsom salt on him. We're going to give him a new sparkly look. He's all bumpy anyway, uh, but I wanted to make him a little more sparkly and lively, so I think this would look really cute. So I just went all the way around, dabbed on the Mod Podge, and then it just sprinkled on that Epsom salt and it stuck really well. So then I made him a little scarf instead of putting those pom-poms back on or something different. I thought a little piece of scarf would look cute. It kind of matches the band on his hat too, so it I think it was meant to be. And I just glued that on around his neck like a scarf would be. found some tiny black buttons in my stash and I added those to where his little buttons would be on the front and glued those on with some hot glue. Did I mention that I got this at my free area at my dump as well? It really helped me out with this video today. Uh, there was a lot of good stuff there that just needed a little zhuzhing up, just like this little snowman. Thank you. 
I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Look at that little snowman smile. I think he's happy. He got a new little look for winter. Let me know if you have any favorites down in the comments and if I inspired you to do some crafts of your own. Don't forget to check down in the description and pinned to the top of the comments will be a link to the only Christmas lights. See if there's anything that you'd be interested in. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a great day.